Hello, beautiful alchemist. Welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host, Yolanda. And today we are in for another gorgeous conversation. We have a guest today named Tiffany Antoine, and she is the founder of Meditating Human. And she has this beautiful program where she supports people in connecting with themselves and project managing their manifestations, which you will hear about. It's very interesting the way that she has merged two aspects of her passions and brought them together as one. Um, there is a lot of tidbits that she shares that I learned a lot in our conversation, including the correct way to listen to binaural beats. Um, but there is just so much that she shares so openly and she's very vulnerable and sharing her story. And so it's a quite powerful conversation and I'm sure that you will find bits that you relate to and also be inspired to start creating and going after your goals and making clear plans for your own vision. So if you wanna learn more about Tiffany and her work, go to meditatinghuman.com. You can also find that she has a great resource of information on her YouTube channel, which is also called Meditating Human. And you can find her under the same name, Meditating Human on Instagram and other social media platforms. So I can't wait to hear what you think about this conversation. And in fact, if you download the Energetic Alchemist app, you can join me for live roundtable discussions on Tuesdays. So I decided to meet with you live. Let's talk about what comes up for you after the episodes, as well as just talking about what's going on for you in your personal practice. So if you would like to join me for those live discussions on Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Pacific, which is 7 p.m. Eastern, you can get access by downloading the app, the Energetic Alchemist app. It's available in the Apple App Store, and if you have an Android, you can find it on Google Play. So I hope to see you there and I will see you on the other side of this conversation. Bye for now. Okay, everyone, welcome to this episode of Reiki Radio. Today we have Tiffany Antoine of Meditating Human. And I'm really excited for this conversation just because your personality and the background, I'm excited to get into this with you. So first of all, I just want to thank you for taking time to come today. I know. And thank you for, for having me. I really appreciate it. I've been looking forward to speaking with you uh, for the past week. So thank you for having me and taking time out of your day. Honey, of course. I love learning from others and their journeys. But one of the interesting things about you and reading about your work was really blending um, two different aspects that you loved with the project management and then this side of spirituality. So before we get into that, I would love to know a little bit about your background. Like how did you, what even drew you into the spiritual side of things? Um, so just, you know, having a very painful childhood, very traumatic childhood. Um, I mean, at that point, we get into the, the sexual abuse and the mental abuse and the physical abuse yeah. and carrying that anger and that guilt and that shame throughout all of my teenage years. Um, I, I tried to kill myself um, in my teenage, teenage years. Clearly, it did not work. Um, and... So continued on. I mean, at that point, I was like, I knew that I was meant to be here, didn't know why, um, but I still carried all of that anger. I didn't know how to, how to deal with it, how to process it. So I am from a West Indian family. Mm -hmm. And so all of that, it's, that's not, at least in my family, and, and, and at least in the other West Indian families that I know, it wasn't about, well, let's explore our feelings today and let's explore how we feel about stuff. And, you know, it, it wasn't that. It's like you get up and you do what you need to do and you repress everything, you know, which, I mean, ultimately turned my father into an alcoholic and a drug addict yeah. because I'm sure, obviously, he was repressing stuff. Don't know what it is, but clearly he was doing it. But 
went into my teens, my late teens, my 20s, had my daughter at 25, and I started to continue that cycle of abuse, of physical abuse. Um, and I wasn't hitting her because she was too young, um, but it was a lot of yelling and screaming and just really nonsensical behavior. And one day she was old enough and I, she, she, I don't know what she did, but if whatever she did, it pissed me off. And I slapped her across her face and her nose bled, slapped her hard enough for her nose to bleed. And like, that was a wake up call. Instantly, something was like, what are you doing? This is how your mother treated you. It's time for you to stop. That was it for me. Because I was like, that's right. That I mean, breaking generational curses, yeah. the mofo, because it stops with you. And having to realign yourself to the person that you want to be, which is why I never really wanted kids because I didn't want to treat my child the way my mother treated me. And then having them to take on that that responsibility of, well, why am I not enough? How come, why don't I have that validation? Then the abandonment issues that come with that. And so it, so that was one of the rock bottoms that I've hit. And it kind of started me on at least being more mindful and being more aware. Um, fast forward, maybe I went fast forward about five, seven years or so. And I was just like, life cannot be this painful all the time. Cause I'm like, it's gotta be more than just getting up, going to a job that I hate so I can pay some bills that I can't afford and that's it. And I was like, and just doing the same thing. It was, it was, it was like Groundhog's Day, doing the same thing just over and over again. I'm like, life cannot be this bad. And a friend of mine at the time happened to purchase the secret for me. Because I, she, sidebar, she did events. She had like all this, like three cases of wine left over. I, I'm not a wine drinker, but I'm not going to turn down free alcohol. So I'm like, yeah, don't drink it. <laughs> and so like I spent the entire summer, that summer completely drunk. And I'm just like this lucid feeling. And it's not, it's not that I want to get drunk, but it made me lucid so that I could silence everything else and I can have this conversation with my higher self and more importantly have my guides answer me back I can hear them and so I'm like well how do I get to this point without alcohol and started that journey and then she happened to buy me the secret for my birthday and she's like you know I know you're into this stuff and I've been meaning to get this for you and she got it for me and I'm like well this is it and I started reading it and then I got the audio book and then I got the movie. Didn't know anything about manifesting. Didn't know that was a thing. Then I started to get into meditation and then I hit a wall. And then of course, you know, synchronicity, the universe put binaural beats in my path. And I'm like, oh, this is wonderful because I was able to then now meditate for long stretches of time. And my mind instantly got quiet. And I was able to have those conversations that I wanted to have and able to have those spiritual experiences that I wanted to have, which confirmed for me, like, yes, there is so much more than just, <clears throat> than just this nine to five and, and paying bills. And so that's what started. And it's, it's those things that started me on my, on my knowingly on my spiritual journey, because right. I mean, we're all on a spiritual journey, whether or not you know it is another conversation entirely. Listen, okay, Tiffany, first of all, I mean, you said so much that I have like 10 questions already <laughs> that I want to ask you, but I have to say, first of all, because I can, you know, when people are sharing with such sincerity, you really feel it. So I just want to thank you, first of all, for just being so open and sharing your story with us today. And when yeah. you're talking about that, um, realization of wanting to do things differently with your daughter I was like wow that insight even in that moment of you saying this has got to stop no more of this this question came up just wondering I mean I can't imagine the weight and the impact 
of what that would do for your ancestral healing and the connection, the relationship with your daughter, all of that. But in that moment or somewhere in the arena, did it highlight for you as well that recognizing and dealing with the pain that you were, you were holding, how it was affecting like all the areas of your life? That didn't come until later when I started doing the binaural beats. Okay. Like when I started that type of meditating, um, I cried for a year wow. straight because all that stuff that I repressed for so long started coming up. Like the, the layers to the onion just started kind of falling off. And a lot of those experiences, I'm sure, as you know, when they... When you, when, when, you, when you are processing them, they come up and you get to relive it yeah. all over again. And it's just as sharp as when it happened originally. And so like I was crying, I was depressed, I was in a funk. I mean, I did have moments where I completely blissed out and I was like in a blissful state for like a week or two, which was fantastic. But like I cried for a year because like all this stuff started coming up and so it was put in my face and at minimum I knew I'm like you know what is coming up for a reason I can't repress this anymore I've got to allow it to come up I've got to work through it and I've got to allow it to dissipate of its own accord as opposed to repressing it so yeah that didn't come until years later at the time when that incident happened with my daughter it was it was just just instantly it's like I shoot it's like my guy stepped in instantly they were like what are you doing like yeah this is what is this you know like it was I, I regret doing it but I don't regret doing it because that was my wake-up call so like you gotta you're better than this you gotta be yeah. better than this you know what I mean and so having that goal of just being a better parent and being a better person because I'm like I don't want to I don't want to be like my mother that's not me. She and I mean, and it took many, many years for me to come to the conclusion that all that aggression that she took out on me because her life was unhappy, that's all her. That had nothing to do with me. And so, but when you're dealing with abandonment issues and you're dealing with validation issues, even though you know on a conscious level, like that has nothing to do with me that, you know, that's all my mother. It right. still haunts you on a, on a subconscious level, on a spiritual level, because it starts manifesting itself in all types of funky ways that you would never think that, that it would show up until you go back and you do the work. And that's, you know, inner child work, shadow work to try to make that connection. And you're like, oh shoot. Like I didn't realize that that experience was connected to this experience and this is how it's affecting me. No, of course. So even with what you said, I'm glad that you mentioned that you cried for an entire year. And the reason is because I think a lot of people have the expectation that once they accept even that they're gonna come into this work of healing, that it is supposed to feel very light or that they're supposed to work through what they realize quickly. So, right. you know, it's like, yeah, a lot of stuff will come up, but then what do we do with it? And what is the experience of, like you said, reliving it again, or finally for the first time, allowing yourself to feel it in a way that you never have before. So I'm so glad that you mentioned the time that it takes, but also that there were those moments of bliss in between. I just, I'm, I'm glad they're saying it so people don't feel like maybe they're doing it wrong. If right. they notice it is like a, a bit like of a roller coaster a and up Absolutely. and down. Absolutely. Like expect, I mean, expect, expect those dark moments. I mean, that was my dark night of the soul, yeah. you know, it, it lasted a whole year and it just came a point in time during that year that I just kind of gave into the experience. Like I surrendered to the experience. I leaned into it and I'm like, I got to keep doing it. You know, like I got it because I'm not yeah. going to step back because like I know better now, but I, I got to keep doing it. And I just woke up one day and I was on the other side of it. And I'm just like, all right. I was like, not to say that it didn't have, I still didn't have more work to do because the work right. doesn't stop. Yeah. But that intensity that comes along with the dark night of the soul subsided. 
where oh, yeah. I wasn't crying. I didn't feel depressed. I wasn't in a funk. Like I didn't know what to do. Like all of that kind of, it all mellowed out. Mm -hmm. I think there is something to, cause I went there to my, I, I, it was a couple of years for me, but I, that's cause I was in a lot of resistance too. But it was one of those things that I realized, I think once you go through something that drastic and you have that realization in the background as you did that this is coming up for a reason. And you started to recognize that it really is a process of purification. Once you get through that initial intensity of it all, I think it does make us more resilient, but we also then recognize it's just part of the healing process. But one of the things you said, I want to back up and ask you yeah, about, sure. because I'm sure people are curious as well. When you had that moment and you felt your guides coming in, was that something that you had already recognized, like the presence of your guides or your ancestors, or was like that the moment where you're like, there is something else here with me? Oh, no, that was the moment because I've never yeah. felt them. I'm sure they've always been around, but I just never felt them that mm -hmm. strong. It wasn't that obvious. Like, it's like someone like kind of stopped my hand and showed up and like, what are you doing? Because yeah. that hit me to my core. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, what is like, you know, why am I doing this? Like I actually started, I, it was a split second, but it was enough where I started questioning my actions, right. which I hadn't done before. Instead of responding to the situations, I was just reacting to situations. And so that pause gave me a chance to respond appropriately as opposed to just reacting off of an automated response. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, there's so much, you're, it was just so juicy and we're just getting started because I do want to ask you about too, like, you know, you mentioned how that weekend where you had, um, you know, the alcohol and it put you in this altered state and they were like, how can I get there? And then the binaural beats, of course, help us to get into certain brain waves. So, but backing up just a little bit from there too, before you got to that, in that moment when you knew like, man, I have got to do something different. There has to be another way. Did you, was meditation on your radar? Was it something that you started Googling to see what can I do or? Not at all. I, that wasn't on my radar. That I, did, I didn't really know about that. I didn't know about the law of attraction, the whole spirituality thing. So I grew up by mistake Catholic because I got expelled from public school in the first grade. So my mother put me in Catholic school, hence how I grew up Catholic by mistake. Um, <laughs> and so, and that was back in the day. That's when the nuns, you, you used to got your ass beat in school, right, in Catholic right. school. And so it was straight fire and brimstone in Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And everything was up to devil. And yeah, no, I wasn't going to do that stuff because as far as I knew, it was of the devil and I, you're not going to send me to hell. So that was no nowhere near on the radar. And I was certainly was not like reading the Bible. I was not a practicing Catholic. None of that. I had no, I had no connection to source. Yeah. It was just me depending on, on myself. And at when, and so when my guide stepped in, I was like, all right, took a step back. But then after that, it was just sheer will that I'm like, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm just going to, if I feel that aggression coming on, I did, I still wasn't at the place where I could explore it. It was just, I'm upset. I'm not going to take it out on you. At the time I was still smoking. So I'm not going to take it out on you but I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna have a cigarette mm -hmm. because I need to calm down. And then I'm gonna come back inside and I'm gonna deal with you. And so that's how I dealt with things for a really long time after that until I came to that point of like, and, it's, and it was just like off the random. I was just like, I just, I'm tired of being upset. Like life cannot be this painful. There's just no way life is this painful all the time. And as soon as I came to that realization and I had that thought, those little things started kind of dropping in my, you know, those dread, those breadcrumbs started kind of dropping. And 
to me, the alcohol was part of it because like it made me lucid. And so I'm like, okay, I want this because I'm happy, I'm lucid. I can communicate freely with my guys. How can I do this? And then all of a sudden the book showed up and then, oh my God, they have an audio book. And oh my God, there's a movie. And yeah. I just started to become engrossed into that. Like, oh yeah, no, I should totally start meditating. And then, oh my God, binaural beats. And <laughs> that was it. Like my, my life started changing. Um, I started changing and I started to align more with my higher self. But in that change and that transformation came a lot of clearing out, which means for me personally, the universe was like, everybody get to go. Everybody goes. So friends left, which made me, I mean, I cried over that because I'm like, you know, I thought they were my friends. Friends left, broke up with the boyfriend because I'm like, we're not growing together. And I'm not going to deviate from my spiritual path because that's not your thing. And I respect that's not your thing, but like, I, I've, I've got to follow my path. Right. And so, you know, and, and so then after that, just really having to go it alone because I no longer aligned with old Tiffany. So this is new Tiffany. And so finding, I mean, which is a good thing. I mean, it feels bad in the moment, but it's a good thing because then it forces you to align yourself with source and to really trust the universe into pushing you forward and, and trusting yourself. And so it pushed me to do that because now I don't have the luxury of saying, well, Yolanda, what do you think about this? Like, no, what do you think about this? Like, how do you want to move forward? And if that's how you want to move forward and you know, and you already know in your heart, whether it's a good or bad thing, you, you have the feeling. And so trusting my intuition and just moving forward in a way that made sense for me. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Part of um, your story just, it reminds me of that, that beauty and that trust of coming to the space of knowing. It's almost like that people talk about blind faith where you're getting these signs and signals and you just keep following the breadcrumbs. Like you have no idea where this is going to lead. You just right. know you had a moment of like, here's my guides. Now I got the book and now I'm listening to this. And it's like, you really, you what do you know other than you're just trying to find some sense of peace and into life different, right? Absolutely. But you don't know where it's going to go. And I think the beauty of what you're sharing as well is just reminding people how the space of self-connection, we get to know ourselves and so far beyond the stories, right? Because right. of course, like we have these ways of identifying because of our parents, our parents' projections, because of our peers, our schools, our teachers, all these things. We make up stories around who we think we are. And then all of a sudden here it comes. No, right. who right. am I? Yeah, right. and so it even makes well, sense that right. a lot of that stuff has to fall away. So you can see real clear just who you are. Absolutely. And building the confidence in yourself right. and be, being able to set those strong boundaries. and like, no, I'm not doing that. That's not me. That doesn't align with what it is I want to do. That doesn't make me happy. And just having the confidence just to move forward yeah. and stand up for yourself and stand up for, you know, what you want to do and what's going to make you happy, even though yeah. it doesn't make sense to no one else. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to make sense. To, and, and I, I just did a YouTube video. I just did a video about this. I think I just post, no, I'm not just going to post like next week, but just did a video about this. And I'm just like dealing with small minded people. Like, you know, you, you have the, you were given that inspiration to do whatever it is you are supposed to do. Right. Other people don't understand it because it's not for them. It's for you. And so you have to have the confidence to move forward in that inspiration and that path and that guidance in spite of your surroundings and doesn't have to make sense to anybody but you. Yeah, no, that's a beautiful, that's powerful. So I, I just wanna sidestep a little bit because now you know, having some clarity around how you got into meditation and we're gonna go deeper into your connection with that because I'm curious about the binaural beats. But on the other side of the fence with the work that you do now, it is this combination of project management and these different spiritual practices. So could you share a little bit about that? How did you come to be a project manager? And was your meditation just like personal practice while you were doing the more traditional route? Sure. And so, yes, so the, the meditation piece was definitely more personal practice. And I later on decided to finish up my bachelor's and go for my master's and then go for 
all these certifications, mainly because like my mother called me stupid for 18 years. So I internalized that. And so me proving to myself that I wasn't stupid was me going to school and then going to get all these designations. Yeah. Um, and which is how I ended up with the project management thing and with my master's and, and then doing project management and all that stuff. And coupled with the fact that I just like logistics and I like operations, I like putting stuff together. Okay. But in doing my own purpose, in, in purposefully manifesting myself, I had a habit of like keeping it all in my head. And like one day I'm like walking around my apartment and I'm just like, well, why the hell am I keeping this all in my head? I'm like, I, I was like, I just need to do what I do best. And I just need to, you know, break out the Excel spreadsheet. I need to put all of this down so I can at least see it. And so I know what's coming next. I know what I need to do, blah, blah, blah. And I just, and just, that's just the way I did it. I, that's how I'm like, I would have a thing that I wanted to manifest or I have an idea. I'm like, all right, perfect. And I would sit there and I would flesh it out and I plan it out and this is what it looks like. And so I know now in about, depending how big the manifestation was in about a year, I should have it, you know, not including that I, even though I have this, even though I have this skeleton about, you know, or this shell about how I want to move forward, I still leave room for divine um, for inspired action. And I also leave room for limiting beliefs to come up because in doing this, especially when you do it that way and you go through it bit by bit, there are parts of that where limiting beliefs are going to come up, but then that's an opportunity for you to stop and take a step back and say, okay, why am I feeling this way about this particular part of the manifestation? And you can, you know, now because it's on paper, you can actually see it. Like it's this particular part of this that I'm having a problem with, not necessarily the manifestation as a whole. Um, and so it's what worked for me and I'm very goal oriented. So if it's on paper and I make a list, I am going to fulfill that list. And that's how I moved forward. And then all of a sudden, many, many years later, um, I was like, I just kind of, I just kind of timed out of the, of the corporate world, the whole nine to five thing. Like I reached the point, like I would hear people talk about it on YouTube and Instagram. They're like, you know, like they can't hold a regular job. And I just never understood it because I just wasn't at that point yet. But I'm like, oh, I was like, I timed out the nine to five. Like it just, it wasn't doing it for me for a long time, but I was just kind of so brainwashed around, like you, you don't necessarily enjoy your work anyway. So it's just whatever. So I just kind of repressed that for many years, but it came to a point where I was like, I can't do it. I was like, it's soul sucking. I can't do it. I get no enjoyment. And then it's like, okay, well, if you don't want to do this, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I don't know. And so then it was that journey for five years of trying to figure out, I was like, the only thing that makes me happy is my spirituality. And so how can I do that? And how can I monetize it so that I can make a living off of it while actually doing something I enjoy to do. And that's fulfilling for me that feeds my soul. Two o'clock in the morning, I just got this. And my guides were like, manifestation coach. I'm like, shut up. Is that a thing? <laughs> and I grabbed my phone and I looked, I was like, that's a thing. And so I'm like, the, that morning I called my daughter, I was like, manifestation coach. She's like, what the hell was that? I was like, right? So I was like, explain it to her. And she's like, yeah. And so it kind of grew into practical spirituality coach. Cause I'm like, it's not just manifesting that I want to focus on. Cause I was like, it's the whole, it's everything. And it's all these parts of it that play a role, like the affirmations and the visualizations and all that good stuff, all that plays a role in it. I was like, so for me, it's not just about manifesting, it's practical spirituality. And so being able to speak about spirituality in a very practical way, not airy fairy. This is what it is. This is what it means in your life. This is how you can get from point A to point B in a very practical manner, but you are still implementing all of these um, spiritual theories in that manifestation and, and moving forward. But it's a way that people could understand because when I started on the spiritual journey and I was doing the research and I was listening to the books, they were great, but I'm like, a lot of that stuff I didn't understand. 
and so I, it, it was just like, okay, I'm gonna do what I thought I understood when I listened to the book. And so that's what I'm gonna do. It wasn't necessarily right, but I'm like, you just got to move forward with this. And so I'm like, for me, a lot of it is talking to people about it in a very practical way. So they get like, oh, so when you, visual, uh, when you visualize, this is what it is. And like, and this is what you can do. And this is how it shows up in your life. And this is what it means in your everyday life. Because we can sit here and have this wonderful spiritual conversation, but it doesn't mean anything to anyone if they can't implement a lot of these things in their everyday life. And so I love that, that you say that. that. Yeah, no, that's amazing. It's um, it's funny. It's what made me uh, want to share in this way and do, even do the podcast really? because I would go to a lot of classes and things, and I, you know, was making out of it what I could. Right. But I thought, if people don't understand, then what's the point? Like, how can we even implement this if we don't? I mean, it sounds good for you, right? <laughs> but, Absolutely. You know, but how do you make this work? <laughs> And it's interesting that you uh, put so much emphasis on like this practical spirituality, because as you were sharing at first, I was like, wow, it's like she took the secret and made it very practical because a lot of people, some people they could do it and they just get it and it clicks. But a lot right. of people are like, what? Like, right. what? You what? what right. do you mean? How do I do that? Right. This doesn't right. <laughs> yes. So just the idea of you taking it and like, breaking it all down to you know making it more ingestible but this is what's fascinating here you say too like okay like yeah I'm a project manager and in my head and I need my spreadsheet and this and this and I'm like man she is really doing the thing over there <laughs> so just so people are clear because you know I didn't mention the name of it but you do have a course called project manager manifestations and it is very focused on being goal oriented. So everything you said just makes so much sense of how this came to be. So I, I want to ask you, like just an example, do people come into this because they want to project manage like their overall life? Or right. is it something like, oh, you know what, I do want to step out and start my own business or, oh, I have this one project that I really need to figure out. Like, how can we use this and does it work all across the board? Well, it definitely works across the board. It works on large and small projects because sometimes, or, or manifestations, I say, because sometimes you know that you want to manifest something, uh, you know, a new car, for instance, you want to manifest a new car. And yeah, we can be like, well, then, well yeah, then you go save your money and you, you go get the car. And it's like, but it's so much more than that because now I have these responsibilities and then, you know, I have to take money from here to move it there what kind of car do I want? What makes sense? You know, what does the payments look like? How do I now shift from this to this? How do I change my mindset to align to this new thing that I want? And it's just all these, it's all of these part pieces of the puzzle that's a part of it that we don't necessarily think of until you put pen to paper and you start fleshing it out and you're like, okay, now this makes sense. Now I get it. And based on what I just did, I know I'm going to have that car in about six months. So right. the other piece of that too is you have an idea and it's, it's, it's a rough estimate, but you have an idea when you should see that manifestation. Because again, limiting beliefs may come up. And I'm like, you know, people, some people manifest things really quickly and they manifest things really quickly because they don't have any limiting beliefs around that thing. They know they can have it and they go get it and it's, they, it, it manifests in their life. Perfect. And then you have people that they want to manifest something. They're having a tough time with it and you're having a tough time with it. Not because you are trying to manifest incorrectly, not that you're doing it incorrectly. It's just that you have limiting beliefs around that manifestation. And when you break it down in, in a very digestible way in, in snippets, then you can see which part of that manifestation you actually have a limiting belief around. And so it allows you just to take a step back and figure out why do I have this limiting belief? Where does it stem from? And now how do I deal with it moving forward? Just the fact that it's in your consciousness now and you're not operating from that limiting belief on a subconscious level starts to clarify things for you right. so that you can get what you want 
faster. And so once you deal with that limiting belief, you're able to deal with that snippet of the manifestation and just move on to the next thing. But it's going to work from everything from, you know, I want to go get a new apartment. You know, what does that look like for me to, I want to start my business. What does that look like for me? You break it down. You, you, and that's where the visualization comes to. And that's something like, you know, you don't necessarily have to take a whole lot of time out of your day because if you're putting pen to paper, you're automatically visualizing that. You're seeing the finished product. You're seeing, you know, what each step needs to look like. You're starting to live and align with that energy. And so that's where the visualization comes in. You have that on your computer screen because my, my computers are, are never off. And so my screens are up. And so the stuff that I want to manifest, I have it on my computer screen all the time. I have a big whiteboard in front of me. So I have these things in front of me at all times. So I can't help but to see it and can't help but to be reminded of it. And then I sit down at the beginning of my day and make a list of what I need to do for that day based on the part of the manifestation that I'm in. And so you start living and you start breathing this thing and you start breathing life into it because you're feeding it your energy. Right, right. No, that makes all the sense in the world. And you know, it's so funny. You said something at the start of all of this, which probably to some would seem obvious, and uh, but it's really profound like that you had a moment of even just simply asking yourself, what do I want? I don't think a lot of us even just even ask that question and just even similar to you, I think if we finally did say, well, what do I want? The answer may not be immediate. So, I mean, that has to be an interesting process of even that recognition. And be patient. My, and my answer took five years, by the way. Wow, wow. It took five years for me to get that answer. Um, because I just knew I wanted to do spirituality. What that meant, uh, because all I knew about monetizing spirituality was really like a, um, like a botanica where you had like a spiritual shop mm -hmm. and you're sell selling, you know, spiritual paraphernalia. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be yeah. in a shop. Like, I, that's not what I want to do. I want to do something else. But what does that mean? And I had no clue what that meant. Like, I didn't know courses were a thing. I didn't know being a spiritual coach was a thing. I didn't know any of that stuff. When the, when the inspiration hit, like it hit like a ton of bricks. And then all of a sudden, like, yeah, there's this and this and this. I'm like, there's a whole world that I did not know of. And then when I came across it and I realized that like, yeah, no, this, 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 this is more my speed. And then I can integrate what I've been doing and, and what's been working for me. Um, and just make that into something where people can get that. I'm like, oh no, I was like, yeah, this is perfect. And so then being able to make that, I want to say making that transition from nine to five, Tiffany, to practical spirituality coach, Tiffany. But I, once I realized what I wanted to do, the universe did not give me a choice. Like all the clients that I had with nine to five, Tiffany, all that, it just all started falling away and falling mm -hmm. apart. And so that transition started happening. And I was just like, I was like, oh, shoot. I was like, yeah, right? I forgot about this part. Like, yeah, you want all this stuff, but like all the all the old stuff has to go for the new to come in. Right, and right. so just being able to uh, accept that and power through. Yeah. That it, it sounds like though, interestingly, ultimately what started happening is like what it was you were literally helping yourself through became the mirror of what you then created and started to share with people exactly what you coached yourself through so to speak and I have to ask you about this too because you know time goes so fast and I want to make sure we yeah, get it no in so you created this platform called meditating human and I know you have a YouTube channel where you post videos and you share a lot of beautiful content there what really inspired this but before you answer that because I don't want to forget this part the binaural beats, okay? Because okay. you did mention, and some people really have a challenge with getting into that open receptive state. So mm -hmm. with the binaural beats, what did that do for you? What was that experience like? And then how did we get to the meditating human? Sure, so the binaural beats, just in case folks don't know about them. And so you get a different beat in either ear, which makes a unique, a unique beat in your head. Um, and it helps to sync both hemispheres of your brain and create new 
um, neural pathways to sync both sides of your brain. So you're coming, so then you start to look at things from a whole brain perspective, as opposed to right brain, left brain. Mm -hmm. And so helping the brain to work the way it's supposed to work. And the binaural beats usually work with um, suffragio frequencies. And so each frequency targets a different part of your being, a different part of your spirituality where, you know, it'd be healing or it'd be, you know, um, the pineal gland activation or the first eye activation, things of that sort. Um, and so as I started along the path of the binaural beat, what that did for me was it helped to quiet my mind so that I was able to actually hear what my guides were saying without all of the noise. And to be honest with you, when I first started that, like the first week, I would say until I got used to it. So like maybe the first month or two, like I started to feel like there was someone else in the room besides myself. And so like it opened me up to that point. And I'm like, but for me, I'm like, oh, this is great. I was like, because I have some questions for y'all. So that's perfect. And I get to hear the answer. And, but it allowed me to really get into these deep meditations. And so going down to the data and, and, and data state, which is where your uh, subconscious and your super subconscious lives. And that's where you wanna change your narrative, change your script so that you can operate from a different narrative. So it gives you access to that part of your consciousness. And stuff that I didn't even know was there, like came up, I was, but I was able to now on a conscious level deal with those narratives, deal with those scripts, and then make my own story around that. And then constantly be open to my guides to be able to have these conversations with them. Because when you started off, especially if you want to speak to your guides, when you started off, it may just be you're listening, or it may just be like, I have a question and put the question out there and you go and you meditate. But it turns into a conversation. Like I am constantly having a conversation with them. Like I'm at my computer working, I'm having a conversation with them. I'm taking information in and I'm getting my downloads. And I'm like, okay, all right, I know how to move forward. And if I'm stuck on something like, okay, like this is what I'm stuck on. It's like speaking to a friend right? that's always there, that's always listening. And I can hear them without me having to go into a meditation, go into a meditative state, but when I do go into my, because I still meditate about anywhere between two to four hours a day. When I started it off, I was meditating between six to eight hours a day because it was, it was, it was such an awesome experience. Like, yeah. and for the record, I started meditating as a form of escapism because life was just so painful, which is why I stayed so long in those meditative states because I'm like, I didn't want to deal with that, but it gave me the strength to deal with it. And then after a while, I'm like, well, I just, I, for me, I'm like, I can't live without the meditation because it's it, what keeps me on a, on a, on an even keel. And it keeps me, it keeps me mentally in a place where it keeps, it keeps my perspective more aligned, I should say with my higher self, with what I want to do and how I want to move forward. It allows me to really take a step back and look at you know, maybe I did something that I wasn't overly proud of. How should I have reacted? I know there's going to be another test. I'm gonna pass it the next time. What do I need to do the next time this thing comes up? How can I be a better version of myself? What does that look like? You know, getting those divine inspirations, getting all of those downloads. So, and I still do binaural beats till this day. Like I will never not do binaural beats. Can I, after 20 years of using binaural beats, can I put myself in a meditative state almost instantly without binaural beats? Yes. Do I want to do that? No. Binaural beats are so much <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tend to like the binaural beats. So yeah. I, I always work with the binaural beats. Um, so the other piece of it, so getting, like, so let me see if I remember the, correct, the question correctly. How did I get started with meditating human? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so I got started with meditating human because of my daughter. She uh, she was like, oh, I want to do a, she wanted to do a YouTube channel. I'm like, oh, that's great. And she told me that. And then I'm like, you know, and I let it go. And then she reminded, and she said it again, like a few months later. And I'm just like, oh no. I was like, no, you should totally do that. And again, I got my, I got my inspiration in the middle of the night. 
And they were like, you know, you should do a YouTube channel. I'm like, uh, because I don't like being in front of the camera. So that kind of ruffled my feathers a little bit and threw me out of my, because I'm like, it will put me right out of my comfort zone. <laughs> and I'm just like, YouTube channel. I was like, well, what am I going to speak about? They're like, well, what you've been complaining that you want to talk about? Like, they're like, you talk about your spirituality. I'm like, all right. And so like, I like kind of let that sit with me for a few months until I finally got the courage to like get in front of the camera and have these conversations and start to put my story out there. And I'm like, what am I gonna call it? They like meditating human, that would be correct. So it has been meditating human ever since and started with the YouTube channel and then the course and the website and all that good stuff came along and Instagram and, and all the all the other drama that comes along with doing something like this. Um, and so, I mean, and that's how I got started. And that's just kind of growing it from there to build my little mini empire um, mm -hmm. with all of my stuff where I can just, for me, be a value for people, you know, make people's, hopefully make people's lives better than when they started listening to my stuff and, you know, giving people hope that like, no, like you deserve what you want and you can actually get what you want. Like, yeah, you got to have to put to some degree, you're gonna to have to put work in, but it's not mindless work. You're working with inspired action, which means that the actions that you take within that context is gonna be way more powerful than you just doing stuff and running around like a chicken with its head cut off because you just want something to do. Like, you know, there is, you deserve what you want. You just gotta figure out what it is because that's part of the whole thing too. Like, what do you want? And once you figure out what you want, perfect let's go get it and so how do you go get it yeah yeah i mean it's it's amazing hearing you say all this one i just love the name meditating human i mean it's like you couldn't get more to the point than that but hearing you say just now you know we do run around like chickens with our heads cut off so much and if you did just sit with that simple question to even just open up to the possibility of knowing what it is that you want Think of right. how much more energy we could direct towards what actually would be fulfilling, right? Towards the thing. And it, it's another thing that you said, I'm so glad you said it. When you said meditation for you initially was escapism. I was like, wow, that really resonates. I never thought about it before, Tiffany. Never till I just heard you say it. But back when I was going through that dark night, I was right. too. And meditation, I mean, as much as I could be, but it was right. because it was the only space where I felt peace. That's right. And I fell in love with it. And that is absolutely what it was initially. And, you know, then it just, it became what it is now, which is totally different. But I never even made that connection before. But with the binaural beats, I have to thank you for explaining that. Because I've heard of them. I heard about it years ago, but never really looked into it. But now okay. I know that if I ever try, have two mic, two earphones on because it's working with both hemispheres of the brain. But I would have had it just on loudspeaker having no idea that I was doing it all wrong. So I'm really glad that you gave us that insight. But so I, I do want to um, bring this all in because you have, again, this platform and your story and how all of it was inspired is just really, really beautiful. But so you created the space your youtube channel is full of amazing content so thank you anyone go to youtube and go to meditating human i mean amazing resource um, that you've created but okay. then from that we have the course yes, which we spoke about where you really can help people get very clear and focused and practical about creating and manifesting what they really want but then you also are going to turn this into a book as well right Yes, I am going to, I am, I am almost done with it. I'm like in the, the oh, last wow. push of the book. And so um, I've, I've done the heavy lift already. So I'm like, I just have the last few chapters to complete, but I'm like, I'm, I am, I decided to turn it into a book because I personally, especially when I get into something. Um, and so I'm not necessarily a big reader. I like to listen to audiobooks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the book, they even though I have like a whole library at the side of me here, but I tend to use them as a resource and I wasn't going to do a book, but I'm like, but 
not all the time you're gonna to wanna to go to you know the PowerPoint slides or whatever and start or going to the loom and, and go and pick and where is it and which part of it, it's all gonna be in the book. So at least you have, you can use the book as a resource guide, as a reference guide to like, okay, this is where she talks about this. I'm just gonna mark it. This is what makes sense. This is what I need to go back to. So you have something physical where you could carry around with you if you wanted to. Right. And just like, okay, I know that this is what I need to do and, and just have that point of reference there and just really using it as a resource guide. So I'm hoping that this year, um, the book will be done. I, Cause I know I already spoke to a few publishing houses and I know it takes about six months from when they get a hold of it and to clean it up and all that good stuff. And I'm sure the book is a mess because this is the first book I've written. So they probably gonna have to do a lot of cleaning up with that. So coming out with the book, then I'm like coming out with my own tarot cards, coming out with my, my own oracle cards. I just, um, I also have on my website, uh, binaural beats um, with, with affirmations because it helps the affirmations to stick better right. when you listen to the affirmations on top of binaural beats. Um, because it's opening up your subconscious and your super subconscious so that you can rewrite that script for you. Um, and then um, I just put on my website uh, custom custom affirmations. So if someone wants their own custom affirmation, they let me know what they are and I can put them and sync it up with binaural beats for them and things of that sort. And there's like a few books on there that I did. Um, has nothing to do with meditating or manifestation per se, it's kind of adjacent to it. So it's talking about like how to deal with frequencies and how to like, you know, change your frequency and how to, and then the one talking about tarots and crystals and things of that sort. So a little bit of everything only because spirituality is not one thing, no. you know, it is, it's everything. It's, it's a way of life. It's, it, it's it's the, the visualization, it's the binaural beats, it's the crystals, it's how you interact with people. It's it's all of it. And I think that people get stuck in the, I mean, I think people try to you may try to use it as kind of religion where like you go to church once a week and for an hour and this is what it is. And so now, <laughs> you know, I'm a practicing Catholic as opposed to well, no, you know, I, I'm a practicing Catholic for the one hour. So now I'm a practicing Catholic, but I can be a jerk for like the rest of the week. The of, right. I can just go to church for that one hour a day, which is how I grew up, as opposed to this is who I am. This is how I live my life. This is how I interact with people. This is how I interact with source. Really knowing, I mean, ultimately, I think what I'm hoping, hoping that I'm doing, helping people to recognize that they are source, like you are God. I mean, it may be a controversial controversial conversation, but like you are source. Like you, everyone is a spark of source and everyone holds that divine power and everyone can, can, can create. And it's not, and we go into, you're not necessarily creating, you're aligning yourself to what it is that you want because everything is already created. And so you already have what you want. Because when people, because when I say that, people are like, well, I don't understand. How do I have what I want if I don't have it? You have it, but then we start having the conversation. I know I'm about to go off on a tangent. I'm going to bring no, it back. No, I'm with you. <laughs> um, you start having the conversations of timelines and, you know, and having those type of conversations. And so helping people understand, like, no, you have it. It's already created. Everything, everything is already created. What you're doing is you're just realigning yourself to the thing that's already created. Your future self, you are you are just the past future self. So you are already that person. So embody that person, act from the space of that person, and then you will become that person. You know, and so just helping people to helping people to understand who they really are, which is God. Okay, first of all, Tiffany, we're going to have to have a whole nother show just to tackle that bit, okay? <laughs> Although it makes sense. It's funny because in this realm, you hear people say variations of that, but I don't know if that is what really clicks. Like even when we say like, oh, we're all one, we're separate from no thing, or the divine in me acknowledges the divine in you. We say right. it in variation, but I don't know, just like you said, I think for a lot of people, it's hard to take it in that we're each an emanation of source. And a lot of that is because of what has been 
God's implanted done. in us from right. religion and these types of things. So right. yeah, honey, we would have to have a whole nother episode on that one. <laughs> but I do want to say, you know, listening to everything that you're sharing even now, all that was like echoing in the background of my mind is, and all of this started just from a moment of her guides coming in and her saying no more. And then listen to all that. I mean, really, like, do you ever sit back and think from that moment, look at all that I have manifested with that at all I've created and side note, congratulations on the book. I just did a deck that came out the end of last year and honey yes. project. So I understand <laughs> like, congratulations on all of that. But Thank do you ever sit back and just reflect at how much you have done in this space and time? Sometimes, and I like I speak to my daughter about it, and I'm like, you know, I was like, if I went back and I told that Tiffany, like, this is everything that you're gonna do, I was like, she would call me a liar, and like, I and 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 I don't blame her because I could never fathom, not even a little bit, that I would have experienced a tiny bit of what I've experienced throughout these 20 years. It's right. it's been, it's been chock full of adventure. Um, and so, and not always adventure that, you know, I'm excited about, but you know, adventure nonetheless. Um, and I'm still going through the adventure and it's never gonna stop. And I'm still like in the process of manifesting um, other things and going through other stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, yeah, like I sit and I, I'm on camera and I'm speaking about these things and I'm like, but, I don't think what people realize is that a lot of stuff that I'm talking about, like I'm going through it as yeah. we speak front and center. I am in the trenches with everyone else, which is why I can speak about it from this place of like, yeah, no, I know. And this, this is the experience that I had. And this is maybe what you should do because this is what worked for me. You know, and I mean, last year I had another dark night of the soul. I'm like, well, what the hell is this? I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, I felt off and I felt depressed. I'm like, wait, I don't, I don't get depressed. So I was like, what's happening? I'm like, I felt like it was just a mess. I was just a mess, and I was just like, and then it just dawns on me, and I'm like, well, damn. I was like, I'm having another dark night of the soul, and it's like I'm looking it up. I'm like, you can have multiple dark. Yeah. I was like, Alexis. I was like, I am on Dark Night of the Soul Part Two, and I was like, I'm be really annoyed if this lasts a year like the first one. I was like, because ah. frankly, I don't want to do this for a year. Because dark nights of the soul, they're intense. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't have, I was like, that I don't have the mental fortitude. I was like, I, I don't want to do it. I was like, I don't yeah. want to do it for a year. I mean, thank God it didn't last a year, it lasts about a month or two, but that was enough. And so like, I'm still learning and I'm still in the trenches and I'm like, I don't know everything and I will never ever know everything. Um, I don't think that's the point of this lifetime. Mm -mm. But I'm here learning and growing with everyone else. And for me, the point is to, you know, help people on their journey and through my interactions with them. God bless me. People are going to help me with my journey. At the, and at the end of it, we will all come out. We will all come out better. And that's what this is all about. This is why I was like even so excited to see what you're putting out in the world, because I know, I mean, it's for the sake of all of us. And we see how much this changes us, which is a question I want to ask you in a moment. But it's funny you mentioned about the dark night because I had another one that was very, whoa, whoa, it was intense. About 10 years after the initial one. Right. But the thing that was different was the initial one was just to, now hindsight, I know, was to get me out of my own way, so to speak. Right. So, so that I could really initiate onto this path, right? Right. But the one that happened, uh, like about 10 years after that was so specific it was yes. very specific as yep. to what it was about and again because of going through that initial one I had no resistance but I was like the same like please just don't let it be <laughs> as long <laughs> and it wasn't but it was really interesting to witness it in this time understand right. what it was I was going through totally different yeah that was very that was amazing yeah. but I have to ask you this um, before we wrap up and tell everyone how to get in um, connection with you and to work with you with all that you have done and with what you've created with meditating human do you ever sit and just wonder 
what it would be like if more of us became consciously meditating humans. Yes, we would be more ourselves yeah. and we would be comfortable with ourselves and comfortable with who we are. And, you know, part of that is shedding all of the programming and all of the indoctrination that we have all gone through and people are still going through right. um, in this lifetime. And so shedding all of that and be and being ourselves, the most courageous thing you can do on this in, in, on, on this planet, the most courageous thing you can do is be yourself. Because I'm going to be myself in spite of everyone else because I don't care. Like, I'm happy with me and that's all that counts because guess what? I get to live with me all the time. Yeah. So I need to be happy with me. Being yourself is the most courageous thing that you can possibly do. All right. That is the perfect note to wrap up everything that you said. So beautiful and how you took us on the journey of how you even got to know who you are. And so for everyone listening, I mean, really, truly, um, I've obviously <laughs> experienced, express, or checked out your work, um, Meditating Human. So I just want to remind everyone again, like right now, go to YouTube, look up Meditating Human, see what Tiffany is all about, but also go to her website, meditatinghuman.com. You can also follow her on social media, Meditating Human. You kept it real easy for us, honey. Just yes. Meditating <laughs> Human across the board. But you can also uh, take her course, Project Manage Your Manifestations, which we have spoken about. And I can't thank you enough for coming and having this conversation with me today. I learned a lot from you. So thank you so much, Tiffany. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. I, it, was, it was everything I had in my mind and that the whole experience, it was, it was magnificent. So thank you so much for, for having me on and taking time out of your day. Yeah, absolutely. And all the links to connect with you will be down in the show description. So everyone get on that now. And um, there was something else I wanted to make sure to say before we left and I forgot. I don't know, honey, but I'm gonna try those binaural beats. Oh, glad to know you have some on your site. That's what I was gonna say. Thank oh, you yes. for letting no me know. Problem. Yes, yes, no we problem. can go to your site for our binaural beats. So thank you so much. And for everyone else, we will see you next time. Bye guys. Okay, beautiful alchemists. Just like I told you, that was an amazing, beautiful conversation with Tiffany. And I want to thank her so much again. Thank you, Tiffany, for coming to share your story, your work, your wisdom. If you want to learn more about Tiffany and her work, again, go to meditating human.com. You can also go to her YouTube channel, Meditating Human, and find her on social media under the same name. And don't forget, if you want to join me for conversations about the podcasts, about your path, if you have questions for me, you can always come join me live for the Reiki Radio Roundtable discussions on Tuesdays. Just download the Energetic Alchemist app be sure to enter your um, email address and a password. There is a lot of free content there that you can download, including you can watch the Reiki radio interviews from the app, but you can also sign up for membership to access more tools to support you in your energetic alchemy. So just a lot of ways to make it convenient for us to connect and continue to grow together in practice. And finally, if you want to have your own copy of the Energetic Alchemist Oracle Deck, you can get that on my website, theenergeticalchemist.com. I've been having a lot of fun doing the readings on the app, which you can also access. So that is all for now. I hope you have a beautiful day. And remember to always journey in love. <laughs>